Şimdi 149 numara örnekte ubukça kül, apasca gri vesaire olarak verilmektedir. Svodaşın listesini incelerken baştaki anlamından ayrı bir semantik anlam taşıyan kelime sunulmaz, sunulamaz. Ubuh dilinin sınıflandırması için kurumsal olarak dört olası örneklem vardır. Birinci örneklem, Ubuhçe adı ediline yakın ve Abaza Abaza dilinden daha uzaktır. İkinci örneklem, Ubuhçe Abaza Abaza diline yakın ve adı ediline daha uzaktır. Üçüncü örneklem, Abaza Abaza dili adı ediline yakın ve Ubuhçe'den uzaktır. Ve dördüncü, Ubuhçe hem adı ediline hem de Abaza Abaza dillerine aynı seviyede uzaklık gösterir. Bundan başka paradigma, paradigmalar teorik olarak imkansızdır. Doğru paradigma belirlemek için biz sözde izdogloz metodolojisini kullanıyoruz. Bu metodoloji ile fonolojik, biç bilimsel, söz, dizim, söz dizimsel ve sözlüksel benzerliklere dayanarak iki ve fazla dillerin, dillerin akrabalığı ve uzaklığı belirlenmektedir. Yukarıda sözü edilen metodolojisini Hint Avrupalı ve Kartal dillerinin sınıflandırması için Tamaz Gantralize ve Vyacheslav Ivanov ve Gibi Macalaryani tarafından başarılı bir biçimde kullandı. Başlıyoruz. Birinci, fonolog fonolojik benzerlikleri. Yanın söz sırası, Ubuh, Lirhiyatya, Adıge dilleri, Lirhiyatya, Abhaza Abhaza dilleri, Jirşi. Abhaza Abhaza dilinde yanın söz sürtüşmeli sesler, bir diş sesler, diş damak ünsüzü sürtüşmeli sesler veya yanın söz unlayıcı olarak dönüştürülmüştür. Mesela Çerkezce bl, Ubuhça bl ve Afazca bj yedi. İkinci, art damaksı ve küçük dil üzün, üzüsüz sesler ünsüzlü sellerin arasında ünsüzlü seslerin arasında farklı ubıkça hıh ve hıh adı gece hıh ve hıh ama abaz abazaca da sadece de hıh abaz abazaca abaza dilinde art damaksil ve küçük dil üzün üzüsüz üz, ünsüzlü sel seslerinin arasında fark silindir Art damaksı üçüncü. Art damaksı patlamalı seslerin damaksılaş, damaksılaşması. Mesela Ubuhçe'de gir, kir, ke, adı gecede gir, kir, ke ama Abhaz Abhazacı'da gır, kır, kır. Bu sırada daha eksil örnekler Abhaz Abhaza dil, dilinde muhafaza edildi. Damaksılaşma süreci ortak Abhaz adı ge dil, dilinin Abhaz Abhaza ve Çerkez Ubuh gruplar olarak bölünmesinden sonra gerçekleştirebilir. Evet, üçüncü. Küçük dil üzümsel patlamaların arasındaki ses uyuşu. Mesela ubıh, k, adıge, k ve apaz adıge, h veya h. Mesela kua, domuz, ubıhça da kua, domuz ama apazaca da ahva, ahva, domuz. Apazca da önceki küçük dil üzümsel ses yutaklaştırılıp sızcılaştırılmıştır. Evet, sonra biçimsel benzerlikleri. İsim hali sistemi. Ubuhçada ve Çerkeçede isim hali sistemi muhafaza edilmiştir. İki dilde de çok fonksiyonun geçişli eylemlerde özne geçişsiz eylemlerde ise nesneyi ifade eder işsel hali bulunmaktadır. Aynı zamanda işsel sonet kalma durumu fonksiyonu da taşınabilir. Ubuhçada ın Bat adı gecede M, Doğu adı gecede, yani Kabardeci'de M. İş bu örnek M'nin ses uyuşumu gösterir. Ne işsel ne de başka halleri apaz abaza dilinde bulunmamaktadır. Elemsi önekler, bu bıhça ve çerkezçe de ortak kökenli olan eylem, elemsi önekler bulunmaktadır. Bu bıhça V üzerinde, adı gece B yanında, veya mesela ubıkça f asmak, adı gecede, adı gecede p asmak, daha önce belir, belirtilen eylemsi öneklerin apaçada eşdeğerleri bulunmamaktadır. Sonra sayı sistemi ubıkçada z, çerkecede z ama apaçada akı. Ubıkçada 
Yirmiden daha yüksek rakamları Çerkezçe'de ve bu bıkçada Lara sonetleriyle şekil verilmektedir. Bu süreç Abhaz Adige dillerinde yoktur. Mesela bu bıkçe Tuat Ola Zala 21, Adige'de Toç Rezırı 21 aynı zamanda ama Abhaz'da Yerşbi Erke 21. Sonra sözü yüksel benzerlikleri bu bıkçe Tuat Oğlu Batı adı geçirdi ve Doğu adı geçirdi. Pa oğlu ama Abhazca'da pa, ba. Sonra Ubıkça'da pa, yürümek, gitmek. Çekerce'de pa, gitmek, yürümek. Ama Abhazca'da anıkara, gitmek, yürümek. Ubıkça, pa, isim. Batı adı geçirdi, pa, isim. Ama Abhazca'da ahdı, isim. Ubıkça da psı, su, batı adı gece de doğu adı gece de psı, su ama akacı da adı. Ubıkça da ndığa, güneş, batı adı gece de tığı, güneş, akacı da amra ve sayıdır. Özellikle dikkat edilmesi gerekir ki Svodeş'in daha istikrarlı yüz kelimeli listesinde Ubıkça ve Çerkeşçi arasında yüzde elli altı, Ubıkça ve Akacı Abacı arasında ise yüzde kırk altı benzerlik bulunmaktadır. Çerkezce Ubıkçı arasındaki ortak birleşik kelimeler bizlere çok önemli tarihsel bilgiler sunmaktadır. Sun, sunmamaktadır. Bu sözcük, sözcüklerin arasında kuralı ve düzenli ses uyuşumları bulunabilmektedir. Öte yandan ise bu sözcükler hem Çerkez hem de Ubık biçimsel kuralları kullan, kullanılarak bilinebilmektedir. Ubıkça la konu, kulak, batı adı gecede ta konu, Sonra e, ubıkça şuhur köpük, batı adı gece de tuhur köpük. Ubıkça hiyel boğulmak, batı adı gece de tihelle boğulmak. Ubıkça da bagajı, çakal, şap, şapsı dilekçesinde becajı vs. Evvelde Nihal Sonuç'ta e, evvelde bahsedilen verileri dayanarak Abhaz adı dillerinin kronolojik sırası ve filogenetik ağacı kurul, kurulabilmektedir. Bir. Ortak Abhaz Adige kronolojik sırası, sonra Ortak Adige Ubu kronolojik sırası bir yandan ve öte yandan Ortak Adige kronolojik sırası, sonra Ortak Abhaz Abhaz kronolojik sırası ve sonra en yeni durumu Ubu Abhaz Abhaz ve Batı ve Doğu Çerkez lehçeleri. Yani nihay olarak biz diyoruz ki Ubu Çerkez diline daha yakındır ve Abhaz dilinden daha uzaktır. Dikkatiniz için çok teşekkür ederim. Çünkü bu oturumda galiba e, Kanada'dan bir canlı bağlantı ile son e, konferans konuşmacısı o, olacaktır. Profesör Doktor John e, Colorosu. Kanada'da Skype bağlantısı olacaktır. Ee, bağlantıyı kurun. Ee, konuşmacılara sorusu olan var mı diye Skype görüşmesinden sonra galiba bekliyorum sendemiz öyle mi? Onun için bekletmeyelim. İlk onu dinleyelim. Sonra sorusu olan olursa 5 dakikada bir soru için zaman ayırırız. Kurumlarımızın Türkçe açıklaması olacak. Şimdi bir şey yapmayız. İlk grup kişiyle 2011'de bir çalışma yaptıkları çalışmaları bir çalışmadan bahsedeceğim ya. Amerika'da Yunan vazolarında e, anlamsız olarak görülen belli yazıkları deşifre ettiklerini e, söylüyorlar. E, konu belli dillerde anlamlı olarak deşifre edilmektedir. Yes. <laughs> Good evening, you. Good afternoon. Let me know in action.
Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's my pleasure uh, to address this convention, symposium, philology Yes. Okay, should I just begin to talk? Okay. I'm going to talk today about a disciple of some ancient Greek phases, and they contain Caucasian languages, chiefly Circassian and Abkhazian. And uh, this is something that uh, was um, a surprise to me, really. So I begin, I follow the outline quite closely. The article on the vases appears in the journal Hesperia, volume 83, from 2014. The Greeks, in fact, we know, were in contact with people called Scythians, or Scythians, uh, from the 8th century of, uh, before the Christian era onward. And this term Scythians refers not merely to the Skolotai, which is what the Herodotus says the Scythians called themselves, but also to other groups in the Caucasus from the Black Sea coast or the Pontic steppes. The uh, word Scythian itself, uh, Scythians themselves call themselves Skolotai. Herodotus tells us this. This can be interpreted as a kind of Armenian-like language, meaning little dogs. And dog at this time was a term for a warrior. It was not a, a swear or a, a curse. Uh, the word for a puppy in Armenian today is skunt. Uh, and skunt itself is also, a Scythian is also from this root in the European kiwol, something like that. I'll come back to that a little bit later. The Scythians are distinguished by their clothing, by their dress. They wear boots, trousers, they have tunics, sometimes they have soft caps with lappets, and this uh, means like little ear flaps. And they carry also a thing called a boritis, uh, which is a combination of a um, uh, container for both arrows and a bow. Uh, so we have many vases in museums now depicting the Scythians and also even female ones that we call Amazons. Okay. Often they are pictured along with Greeks, ancient Greeks. Okay. Uh, these vases with the uh, Scythians on them uh, often have, or usually have, what are called nonsense inscriptions in the Greek alphabet. I've supplied a little map showing the Greek contacts along the Black Sea coast, which were extensive. So it's quite natural that these inscriptions would come from languages that are in this region at the ancient times. I also show on page two, uh, three, uh, some image of Scythians on a vase from Chimea. You see the typical uh, clothing that they wore at that time. It's a very modern clothing. This is something for maybe another talk. Now, this was a collaboration, something I normally rarely do in my career. It was initiated by Adrian Mayer, professor at Stanford, a classicist, in September 2011. She contacted me. Well, it seems I had given an etymology for Greek Amazon as a succession word, Amazon, the forest intimate prefix, uh, mother. And that's in my NART, uh, NART collection uh, uh, 2002. And uh, the vases were supplied, images were supplied by David Saunders, who's an assistant curator of antiquities at the Getty Museum in Los Angeles. So he gave the vase images to Mayer, and she would forward these to me, but merely as strings of letters. Uh, sometimes she mentioned her remarks on the, uh, me, on the presence of uh, uh, of Amazons or Scythians pictured on the vase. On other occasions, she would 
make up inscriptions uh, and send them just to check me, <laughs> give me nonsense, and see if I was making up fantasy uh, translations. She was tr tr tricky, <laughs> a clever woman. Uh, so how, how did I do this? I mean, how, how, what kind of techniques or knowledge did I have that helped me uh, to, um, to do this? I had knowledge, of course, of Northwest Caucasian languages, Circassian, Ubu, Alkaz, Basatu. I also know some Georgian, and I had studied Farsi and Basetian, the Goran Basetian, and I first studied ancient Greek. Um, and so I knew uh, also these, uh, these languages, and I also knew theoretical phonetics and theoretical phonology, where I was trained at Harvard in these disciplines. Um, I had also reconstructed the original language, the proto language, from, from which Northwest Caucasian languages have descended. So I had some notion of what old versions might look like. Uh, I also had experience from the web, in the world wide web, of uh, Northwest Caucasian peoples trying to write their languages in Latin script. And so sometimes a KG together would be a K or a P, uh, an H could be a H, a K or a H. And so there was this variability. This is sort of settled out now. This was something earlier when, when the uh, communications were beginning, the first beginning. I have some idea of the history of Greek and possible phonetic sound changes within Greek itself. For example, one that uh, is possible is that the Greek chi, written as x, is actually ch, which in phonetics is written as x. One evidence is Hittite achiawa or achiawa in the Hittite treaty referring to Greek achiawa uh, from the Iliad, this kind of thing. So perhaps some of the sounds uh, had early uh, phonetic changes. Uh, I give examples. Here's the Greek um, uh, phonemic system, the consonants and vowels, and uh, the vowels would be uh, plus or minus long. And you see, it's fairly simple, very simple system. Uh, perhaps the uh, aspirated K, K with a little hook, K uh, had an allophone K as well as I suggest with the Hittite, Hittite form. And if you go to uh, page six, uh, item. Uh, for B, you see I give the sound system from Chabot, Circassian, which is much richer, much more complex than the Greek. So clearly, any Greek making a vase or wanting to write Circassian on the vase is going to be really <laughs> faced with a serious challenge. How to do this? You know, that's such a rich language being converted into a very simple, uh, simple uh, writing system. So now item five, the fact that these things would appear in Greece on the vases, these figures and these inscriptions, this is consistent with the history of Scythian Greek contacts. The Scythians, in fact, served as police in Athens, and we'll see a very important example of this. The Greeks traded all along the Black Sea, the literal coast. Hmm? And we have traces of what one might call macro Armenian, an Armenian not in Armenia but up in the steppes still, originally. Uh, Herodotus tells us the leader was called Oyar Pata, and I interpret that as Proto Armenian Potor, to strike, plus an Iranian word also to strike. So they were forgetting what the first word meant and they resumed the, the, the uh, Iranian. Skolotai, little dogs, I mentioned Skund, Papi, English Hound. Scoot itself, it's cited in Greek, it's proto Indo European Kyoto, something like that. Irish Ku, Russian Sukha, um, which is shifted to the female bitch. Iranian tribes and a goddess also are, are, are part of the names that come to us. Our Maspi, owns of wild horses. Asp is Iranian for horse. Tabiti, goddess of the Scythians, the goddess of the hearth. This is related to Latin tapos, heat. Sarmate is simply Ossetian for free men. That's all. An old Ossetian 19th century dictionary, not modern. Sarmate, Nasagete, the great, Ad, Nas, Ad, Adjective, Ket, Clan, Ta, Collective, the great clan. So we can, a little Iranian knowledge, we can translate these names. 
There are Caucasian names, sometimes a bit mixed, Aspur Giani or Aspur Giani, Iranian Asp again, but the Mingrelian suffix Giani. Gagais, Georgian Gagar, apricots, the apricot growers. Colchis, you know, very famous in uh, mythology. This is Professor Kashan, Pushhet, the word for mountain region, now Pushhet. Um, but the Shet is still in Ubek, Shekha, mountain, from Shekha, and in Abkhaz also Chkha, where the Shet is becoming a Shur, Chkha, from Shkha, Ashkara, the mountaineers, the mountain. Absorthus, the brother of Medea in, in the Golden Fleece legend, Colchis, is simply a cousin of South Asian nature, Abswa, with a pronoun on the suffix, right? right. So uh, it's perfectly possible that on these bases we would find Caucasian names and Caucasian phrases. The cru crucial one is number six. This is where we have, or I have a breakthrough. This is the goose vase. Okay. Vase here is a calyx or crater or something, a big wine container. It's a vase from the uh, Italian province of Apulia, and it shows an old theatrical scene from a lost play by Aristophanes. A Greek man is about to be flogged uh, for stealing a goose. He says, he has bound my hands above. He says this in Greek. There is an aggrieved party with a dead goose, and you can't tell a man or a woman, or old, old person. And she says, he says, I shall furnish, uh, and the implication is testimony, or offer testimony. And there's a Scythian policeman in the characteristic clothes who says, Norara <laughs> okay. Now I give uh, the capitals, that's the rendering from the Greek letters, um, but always, uh, if I can, um, somehow I give also the Latin form. So Norara Tablo is actually how it looks in capitals on the base. I give a picture of the base, and this is in the Museum of Art in New York City, in Manhattan. Um, so I knew I nothing about vases. I didn't care about vases. I knew nothing of this vase. And they are sent only the inscription alone, not about the book, not about the book. But I recognize immediately, immediately that this is what I call old Circassian. It's not something you would say today. Uh, maybe somebody in the audience might have something similar. But I analyze it this way. For thither, or zero for it in the beginning, n for thither, law for surely. Now, this is preserved only in Zubakhas, or that means indeed, surely, when I saw, but I figured it was also part of all the languages early on. And then we get the very clear R's that are stuck in for wives uh, when you get the third person forms. So I had Y for a flat space, open space. Yeet, he's, he's standing in a, in, a, in a yard or something. So, seat, I mean, in the yard, standing in the yard. Uh, ya, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, third plural, then third non present. And I reconstructed a root ta. This would be d ta for to steal. It's represented as double t, which is often the case with the unaspirated voiceless sounds of jato or chapse. Catherine Paris did this in her work. And it's today preserved as Tivoa. Tivoa, thief. Uh, basically, to steal agent, but the root is now lost. Only preserved as a noun. So I reconstructed the root. <laughs> and then there is into, or not. And then ble is past. You get the pleasure. You have to look past somebody, something like that. Ble is past, or sneaking by, going around. And always is the predicative. Okay. And so what it meant, it made perfect sense for the thief. It means he is the one who snuck around some house, passing by things, sneaking by things, and stole it, the goose, I guess, from those people over there uh, from somewhere in, in a yard, a flat space, a, a, a back, backyard, a, a enclosure, perhaps, something like that. So it says, the policeman say what the guy did, why he's going to beat him. But he says it in old Circassian. <laughs>
And uh, this, this was amazing. If we go to E, this convinced the mayor and myself that I was actually deciphering these nonsense forms. This is crucial in the theory of decipherment. You have to have a, a kind of clear breakthrough piece of some sort. Um, so, uh, uh, the important thing here, going on with the other ones, and this also helped, was that in Northwest Caucasian, at least in the older people I've worked with, there was a tradition of giving a public name on the basis of something the person had done. So I had a friend who taught me, Jibal, uh, uh, I give you life, thank you. So maybe a very polite person. He had a friend named Hay, Fat Dog. <laughs> That's his nickname, because he was fat. <laughs> and uh, I guess I don't know. Uh, there are other names like this. So sometimes these names can be read as phrases. Otherwise, the names are very difficult to deal with. It. Um, and in fact, in many cases, it would be so. So on other cases, we had other inscriptions. So the Greek would be Chukos P in one of these. I think this is pretty clearly a cousin. Protest by the is uh, to shout. It's based on the root to say. That sit is hot, enthusiastic, Sebastian sit. And B is a name suffix in Akhazim. And then E makes it emphatic. So enthusiastic shouter, someone who gives a battle cry. Then <laughs> looks impossible. P K P U P long E S. Now it's possible that the Greek H also represents P. And uh, this is, looks purely like nonsense. In fact, I just received a paper from an Armenian scholar in Moscow trying to refute all of this. So, uh, I think he's wasting his time because I'm quite confident with this. I interpreted this as uh, a body cover, uh, for body or bone, arm, leg, chap, skull, right? um, uh, to cover uh, something, and that's the word there. Um, and uh, I'm going to spray that, that, that's worthy of armor, something like that, worthy of a body covering. So I'm assuming that body covering means armor here. Then there's one, something like this, C. I took this as, uh, and this is a bit different from anything modern. It would be the other way around, I think, modern, but among the group, and perhaps as an early noun, and then a hero, manly, from going from one to heroes, that kind of word. These are all warriors, by the way, out in the days. In the Sevao, uh, what? Something like this. And I think this is set, knife, a red, a ah, uh, possess, possession, uh, peace, and then the, the verb to wear, to wear clothing or carry. And what, again, this predictor. And so one who wears a sword. I'm not seeking complete consistency here because uh, the vases were done by different artists and they were done over a period of about 300 years. So this is not uh, necessarily always the same. So those are Circassian. Then we come to one of Barkida. Barkida. And I saw here Indo Aryan work from perhaps ancient Sindhian. Uh, Greek Sindhioi, which is preserved in India as Sindhi, uh, or Hindu from Iranian rendering, and Irish Shana. This is a word for people around a river somewhere, probably the Kuban. And these sort of been really leftover people. And this is from Proto Indo European well, Kedide. Well, here is Indo European root, it means about five different things. Ah. And here I take it for wealth, the word for wealth. Adjective, the descendant of, the Ida is descendant of, which we see in Greek. And this would be preserved the root well as, as a ruler or important person in Tokarian A, an Indo European language found out in China. Lalo, king, or English wheel or wealth. Okay, the offspring of the nobles or wealthy would be the name of Barkida. Barkida. So I think this was borrowed into Circassian as a source of the Circassian word locked, locked for noble or noble uh, caste. Yeah. And his Gugamis, uh, this is mixed, this is Sir Gatchewol, the miss, the miss, 
is a, is a Persian or Iranian naming suffix. So someone associated with metal in some way. Um, and on the same base is also, also Eichmann. Now Eichmann turns out to be the one clear case that's Ubik. There are some other words I suggest might be Ubik. This is Ubik Wagyama, which means you, to you, wa, at, you, get, uh, fatal. And this is an imperative, so the vowel is lost. And that is not uh, a negative. Not negative mit. And Ubik is always on the front, except for one word. And it's this word, and it's still in false dictionary. Dictionary that is on Obuk, Oslo. So, here it is, don't fail. And, and uh, obviously some kind of very old construction, archaic construction, as an indirect object as well, also uh, in Obuk and older forms. And then again, another vase has a weird series of Hirun, or something like that. Um, uh, these, I don't think, are names of the people involved, perhaps, but uh, there are two women and a dog in a scene, and we have to worry about the Greek eta or H. It can be used as what they call heta, <laughs> which would be an H. And that might mean a cousin, something like that. Um, the Fourth letter is in parentheses because it's not clear on the pages. Okay. So that's why the W is in parentheses. Being over there, one who's over there, something like that. And if the eta is in fact eta, which I guess it's going to be laf, not laf, not something like that, which means the mutual assistance, laf, uh, and progressive aspect, which again is unclear and indefinite. So we are helping each other. And then kirun would be our cousin Karana. And Kar is, Kar is a um, verb meaning setting loose a dog with barking and commotion. Um, there's a progressive aspect and an indefinite uh, principle in there. Unleashing the dog. And in fact, if there are two women helping each other, two women, these are Amazons, there are two women, and between them is a dog running loose with a leash flying in the air. This is what's on the page. So the idea we're helping each other and we're setting the dog loose perhaps on an enemy or something like this makes perfectly good sense, as improbable as it seems. Then another base has Gogo Iguiki or Gogo Wiki, something like that. I don't know entirely what this means, but clearly Gogo is Georgian. That means a maiden or a young woman. Then there's Kepes, which I took to be Circassian Kepes, flank, hot, hot flanks, meaning one enthusiastic, excuse me, for sex. This may sound a bit um, uh, imaginative, but there is the Amazon Queen California, which means the same thing, <laughs> okay? Um, uh, translated basically into a mixture of Greek and, and Latin. Um, then there's another vase, a vase has was, was on it. This is Ossetian, transparently. Was, what's holy or sacred or spirit, being a pious one, a holy person. Then we have a more complex vase. We're getting discovered more difficult and in some ways more controversial uh, translations. This is the scene of a woman, woman putting armor on a man while a boy and a dog stand nearby. So often the, the uh, warrior would have a woman and his mother or wife dress him for war. And it has Kyoto, Kyoto next to the boy. I don't know, I, maybe it means jumper. That's his nickname. He jumps a lot. He's a young guy. We have Ites next to the man. Ah, well, let's see. Oh, well, let's see if it's well. I was trying to read off, so I don't exactly, but you see. You taste something like this. This is a bit archaic. It doesn't, you wouldn't say this this way today. Not the first why. You could, as one who stands on something. T would be a surface that sits standing or sitting, being located somewhere. Eios, Eios, the dog. This is almost big why. It would be the initial E would be now zero or, or another Y. You already have this construction. But if earlier surpassion had some much was more like Ubik or Alcaz. This is 
possible. So it means him sitting by him. So the dog's in fact sitting by him. <laughs> and the man is standing there and the boy jumper is watching. Okay, and then we have yeast day that's next to the woman. Okay, and uh, this would be uh, those things, the armor, ye, him, I, sh, hang on him, to is a directional, and ye would be prolonged action, uh, which I guess you, you can see in uh, some verbs even today. Um, I think uh, uh, we, uh, but to say that we uh, belong to, to talk a lot or say a lot of things or something. I guess what it means is I am dressing him, I am putting it on him. So there is some uh, innovation perhaps to say on my part here in interpreting some of the uh, exact details, but the overall rendering makes perfectly good sense. Okay. Uh, then another base, base L, say, a scene of a Greek warrior flanked by a Scythian archer, a dog, and an old man. And this is again less uh, likely, it's a bit uh, difficult. Kisi is a bit of the Scythian. So I think this is Circassian Kese. Um, this is a uh, Kwetz, a Kwetz verb, uh, in the hand, a Kwetz in the hand. Um, so somehow someone being situated, he or she, in the horizon of interest, whatever direction to, by him be situated, and it's prolonged action. Uh, in other words, uh, he or she is standing by uh, the warrior, uh, as, as a friend of the warrior, really cares about the warrior in some way. Then we get this weird word, <laughs> I think this is some kind of effort to render uh, something like this, and the closest I could give was a Kazim, and a Rakel, a Kazim, a Kel is the root, uh, or uh, meaning adjective rather means brave, and uh, or also the abbreviated aga either way means full enemy or full. So brave adversary would be a brave foe would be a name, a kaza name or something like Then we have chi lambda epsilon missing letter sigma i collects something sit that's written by the dog. Now, I interpreted the chi lambda, the XL, as an effort to render fit. And I just took it because it, it, it, it makes sense further down in the same base. And this would be the peculiarity of this particular base maker. K, um, KC is what I interpret this as, man direction to, again, be situated because these are all scenes of static, so static scenes of people sitting, situated by the man. Then Kech, again, do it again. Uh, next to the Greek warrior, I think this is a fairly complicated Circassian verb. Plan be a change of state, like I say, get off the kapka, sip kapka, and get off my I dismount, and get off my horses. Um, uh, so uh, again, among a group, then. Uh, uh, Y would be direction, uh, would be, who is the valence marker you see on the verbs today? Uh, and again is this from among the group of heroes. We saw that earlier in another base. So most of that's, uh, that would be like a formula, so for a hero, you see Kerkho, something that old in old days. Now we say Kerkho, or you say Kerkho, you know, a heroic man. Um, so uh, this is the one from among the group of heroes. And then we have X or Kai Land again, K Hui, and that would be K, K Hui, Lu, Fat Man, Fat Woman. I don't know what to make of that. I decided it must mean a eunuch. And eunuchs are typically fat. <coughs> and it's a typical circumcision rhyming compound, what I call a rhyming compound. And Po now means daughter. But if you go to, uh, to Abkhazia, and I chose the zip form because it's the most conservative one, you get Pashba, Pashba, with Shisha, which is Shisha in Sebastian. Pashba is uh, from Pashba, woman. So originally the word for daughter was woman. 
and has been shifting in meaning and subtraction. So those were the strongest cases on the basis. There was one more where I said that she has curly hair and the woman had curly hair. But Dr. Mayer did not want to include that for some reason. And there are two other words or names that are worth mentioning that are not on basis, but I think are clearly uh, um, uh, Northwest Caucasian, in this case Abkhazian. Uh, Dr. Mayer mentioned to me the ancient Egyptian pharaoh queen, Ashtashit, and that she was renowned as a warrior queen. Now this is Abkhazian, I think, pretty clearly. I said this, and, and the, the Egypt, Egyptologists tell us that this is not the Egyptian name. This is some foreign queen that's come in. So this would be Abkhazian Ashuta. Shta is foot after. It really means on the tra trace, on the trail of somebody. And uh, the, so the after shit is to kill, and ta is a state of participle, meaning the one who does something. So one who kills as she pursues. So if she was a famous warrior queen, this would make sense on the battlefield. So she's now cousin that wandered down, was married to an Egyptian pharaoh and became herself queen of Egypt. And then there's the huntress of myth in Greece, Atalanta. And this is up cause, transparently, Atalanta. <laughs> a, the, ta, down, to, a, o, her, to, her, a, mm, they, in third position, in in Ta throw a two. They throw down to her. What do they throw down to her? They throw down the boar skin that she killed. She killed this boar in a hunt. And that's how they award the skin to her. They throw it at her feet. Here, the scissors. So she's the one that won the pelt of the wild boar. So I think that is another a very clear Abkhazian or Northwest Caucasian person who has come down to us through, uh, through Greece, ancient Greek material. So this is, um, I think, an important breakthrough for the classicists. They are very excited. They want to uh, now learn Circassian and Abkhazian as well as Greek and Latin. <laughs> so we'll see in the future. Maybe you should give scholarship to some of these people that want to do this. <laughs> but thank you very much. I am very honored and pleased. I'm sorry I could not be there in person. Um, and I hope that uh, in the future I can come and visit and give some talks and get to know you all and perhaps uh, have an opportunity to, uh, to uh, meet you uh, in Charlotte.